welcome everyone who is watching to this worship service on the fifth Sunday of the Epiphany. A few comments before we begin. Um, our internet is spotty at this particular moment, so if it cuts out, just be patient. We will get it back on. We also seem to be having a little bit of trouble with the sound, so I encourage all of you to turn your volumes up if you cannot hear either myself or mine. We are doing the best we can and encourage you to just um, be patient and we will um, worship together as best as we are able. Christ our light, with each new morning you welcome us into the world with your lavish care. You meet our hungers and our thirsts, blessing each day with your holiness. Him for Epiphany. God of our journeys, there is no reversing the roads we travel. Through this life, for each of our paths only goes in one direction. We will never return to this moment, this day, but you direct our paths, show us the way we should go. The light left by the Magi goes with Jesus on his path. Let that light shine shimmer for us in our journeys, illuminating each step we take. Amen. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sin, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson comes from Isaiah 40, 21 to 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told, from, told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and it is its inhabitants, it, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely they are planted, scarcely sown, and scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Lord? Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 147. Hallelujah! How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the heart and prepares rain for the earth. He makes rain plants to serve mankind. He 
provides food for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the light of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. The second lesson, 1 Corinthians 9, 16 through 23. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but, not, but if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make use, full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all so that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I become as a Jew in order to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but I am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that I might, by all means, save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I might share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. When Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and was in bed with a fever, and they told him of the man had lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went into a deserted place, out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, 
so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And she went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message of their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Give us grace, blessed Jesus, to let you be who you are and not who we would have you be. Amen. There's a lovely term I encountered this week in regards to Jesus' ministry in Mark. It is holy agnosticism. Most of us would never turn ourselves as agnostic, but in truth we are most of the time. Do we really understand Jesus all the time? Do we have all the faith that he longs for us to have? We are encountering in Jesus a person who is in the shadows, yet who hides, and hide he must in order to refill the empty of constant demand of a servant of God with never enough time in prayer. He has had enough of the clamor of people wanting not his message, but his touch, his healing. They, like oftentimes we, do not want to turn from the direction our life is going to follow him. If Jesus is the presence of God, then what kind of a God is he? Holy agnosticism simply means we don't know, but we are searching for the answer. It is not unbelief. Hear me clearly. Holy agnosticism is not unbelief, but it's looking for more to believe in, and it is a life of questioning, which is a good thing to do, because if we never question Jesus, we would never seek him more. In a paraphrase of Rainer Maria Rilke, do not seek the answers but the questions. And along some distant day, you will find yourself living into the answers. The point is not to have more answers, but to have more Jesus. And in order to have more of him, we must seek him more. He longs to be found not just for what he can do, but who he wants to be for us. And for all who claim to be his followers, no matter whom, where, when, or how. There will be some who will say that doubting is a sign of not being a true believer, but I completely disagree, because without doubt we cannot grow more in our faith. We will only stay content with how we are. Also to question and to ponder. Jesus found his sense of himself in his prayer. Alone in deserted places, in order to have more Jesus, we must do the same. In order to come through this pandemic with our faith not only intact but flourishing, we must find Jesus in those quiet spaces, asking for more of him. If we do not grow weary, as the prophet Isaiah proclaimed, then our lives will be transformed and our faith will be strengthened. A book written many, many years ago by a French priest, Jean-Pierre de Cassage, to women living in a convent in France, is his book entitled Sacrament of the Present Moment or Abandonment to Divine Providence. Every moment has the potential of being holy and every day in our lives is an opportunity to abandon ourselves more to Jesus, more every day. But do we, and will we? Even in this pandemic time in our lives, we fill each moment with something to do. This is what the people of Jesus' day wanted of him. More miracles, more healing, more demons exercised. And we want the same. Do more for us, Jesus. Cast out this pandemic. Heal these family members. And these are valid prayers, but they are not the point of Jesus' ministry. His 
was a ministry of proclaiming the kingdom of God, of God's presence come among us. The call on his life was beyond being helpful then and now. He heard a life direction to be faithful to God, to who he was, to who he is now. And we must listen even more in these days to his voice, begging us to come away and be still, be filled with his presence, and stop always being so busy. Jesus had to do what each of us must also do, discern our life's direction in the quietness of prayer and stillness. Lent is almost upon us. Prayer and quiet would be good practices during this time. Be still and to know God. Amen. Folks, it seems we're having some trouble with the volume. Oh, there we go. Okay, do I need what? I think you can stay on that one because it's just, I think it's. Okay. Can you ask some folks if they heard what I just said? Or I'll ask those of you who are watching, did you hear the sermon? Yes. Okay. So we're okay. Sorry. It was wonderful. <laughs> there we go. All right, and so now we go to our affirmation of faith. We believe in God, whose wisdom blesses us as the steps of the Holy Family were blessed. We believe in Jesus Christ, born Emmanuel, God with us, baptized and revealed the most beloved of God. He sought to heal humanity by taking our brokenness upon himself. We believe that he will come again. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God's fire to enlighten our souls, God's mercy to protect us. The Spirit is our companion and counselor, reminding us of the gift of faith, the ever-presence of God, encircling us and granting us peace. Thanks be to God. Our prayers this day are in your bulletin, and I ask that you remember on a daily basis to pray for our presiding Bishop Michael Curry, our Bishops Marion and Gervani, and Chilton Knudsen. And I simply am going to read the names of the parishioners who have asked for prayers, for Aurora Denison, for Linda Abrahams, for Mary Smith, for Bob and Nancy Harding, and for Joyce Hawkins. And for those listed in our prayers, we also remember those who have birthdays this month, for Maggie Schneider, Allison Barbary, Eric Kaufman, Carly Perra, Nancy Rao, and Ethel Olivier. As God's chosen and priestly people, let us pray for the needs of the church and the world that peace will be like bread bringing hope in place of despair. O oh, gracious God, hear our prayer for all who worship you this season of light, from the Magi to the Transfiguration, that justice will flow like wine bringing freedom in place of captivity. O oh, peaceful God, we remember national, state, and city leaders throughout all places and countries that they may be people of impartiality to all. For all who are persecuted, shunned, neglected, or rejected because of prejudice, that strangers will be welcomed into our presence as kindred. God of justice, we remember especially our Muslim and Jewish brothers and sisters, the refugees wandering through the world who are continually pushed aside. For members of our community, that we may recognize the gifts we have received from the Spirit and use them freely for the good of all. Faithful God, we offer ourselves and the time, talent, and treasure 
you have given to each of us to sustain this community. For all members of the church community, including the sick, the dying, the diseased, and those who mourn, we especially remember all who are on our prayer list. Holy God, lover of the human family, whose hope rises like bread, hear the prayers we offer in faith and strengthen us in your love that we may be bread for our world, that hope may arise. Amen. Let us offer our epiphany prayer of forgiveness. If I have failed to perceive you when you have appeared in the face of a friend, if I have neglected to find you when you have come with the hunger of a stranger, if I have not embraced you when you have sought me out in the face of the poor, if I have not played with you when you have greeted me with the delight of a child, forgive me. Open my eyes, my hands, my arms, my very self to know your appearing and to celebrate the flesh-shaped mystery of Emmanuel, God with us. May the God who has been made known in the person of Jesus open your heart to be a dwelling place so you may receive, even in the bleakest spaces, great delight in God's loving favor towards you and all humanity. Amen. I offer all of you God's peace. And before Lori plays our communion hymn, a few announcements, if I might. There is supposed to be a drive-through today. Um, I'm here, Lauren's here, Maya's here. If you all would like to come, I am staying. I can meet you at the back of the church if you want to drive through. Um, that, would be, that would be wonderful to see your faces. As you know, next week is my last week to be gathered with you. Um, it's been a very different season than we all ever expected, but we have gotten through. And you all will meet again outside when there isn't so much snow or cold or rain. And this church will grow and it will continue to be a presence in this community. Of that, I am sure. Just know that you all, as the Church of St. Bartholomew's, have a place here to expand outward. Use your gifts well. Do not hide them. Be not afraid to be the church that God would have you to be.
we come to the table of God. God of light and life, we praise you and we bless you because you do not hide from us, but reveal yourself clearly in creation. All your works proclaim love and concern for us. Mm -hmm. We thank you for these gifts. We offer our thanks and praise for sharing your splendor with us as the God of divine luminosity. You created us in your image, invited us to walk in light, but we sinned. Confused and lost, we prefer to walk in darkness. Holy God, we gather together and give you our gratefulness for the wonders of your love, even when we wander away from you. So we join all creation that basks in the light of forgiveness and love in proclaiming your glory as we say, Holy, holy, holy God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. We marvel at how you continue to lavish your gifts upon us in the faces and families we have, in the life and health we enjoy, even in the midst of pain and age. We especially thank you, gracious God, for speaking your word, Jesus Christ, to us. He is your image of love, of hope, to which we cling. We thank you for Jesus' life and all he taught us of your love in the meal he shared on the night before his trial. When he was at supper with his friends, he took bread, blessed you, his father, and broke the bread, saying, Take this and eat, all of you. This is my body, given up for you. Then he took the cup filled with wine, blessed you again, his father, and passed it among them, saying, Take and drink, all of you. This is the cup of my blood poured out for you and for all, so forgiveness may be offered. Do this in memory of me. Come, most holy God, bless this bread, bless this wine, to be for us gathered around this table, the body and blood of your Christ. And so, Father, we thank you for Jesus. He has pitched his tent among us, shown us the way from isolation to community. By his death, he has shown in the way, I'm sorry, by his death, he has shown us the way from selfishness to love. And by his resurrection, he has spoken the word of hope for a new and fuller life. And so we proclaim our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send the spirit of Jesus promised to us, that spirit that gives direction to our weary souls and light to our pilgrim's path. In that same spirit, may we discover the places where God dwells. Open our eyes and our ears, Holy Spirit, to see where we may be afraid to look, to hear you in voices others often offending sensitive ears. We seek you as you come to us, poor, hungry, thirsty, naked, diseased, in prison, alone, as the least of among us. Teach us to see you, to hear you, to reach, to touch you, to know where you are, and not as we ought, as we might like you to be. All this we ask through Christ our light, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, eternal God, forever and forever. Amen. So we pray in the words that our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body and blood of Christ, broken for all. Let us pray. May we all, even as Jesus did, live the life of love, to waste no more time on fear. God invites each of us to new dreams, new changes. We invite Jesus into our spaces, into our quiet, into this day. Amen. I offer you this final blessing. When the path is simple, God's peace. When the way is complicated, God's peace. May Christ, through the love of God, not only show you the way, but also be the way you travel, the way of blessing, the way of peace. In the name of God, source of all being, eternal word, and Holy Spirit. Amen.